Hi, and welcome to this brief overview of creating a research poster. During this presentation, I'll address what makes a good research poster, best practices to keep in mind when creating a research poster, resources you can reference while making your poster, and finally, how to submit your poster for printing. Before we get started, let us define what a research poster is. It is a common way academics present a summarized version of their work and are usually displayed at discipline-specific conferences or campus events like an undergraduate research symposium. There are four main components of a research poster. Your research, visualizations, this can be charts, graphs, photos, or illustrations, a conclusion where you state what you want people to take away from your poster, and references to the information you used in your research. This can be journals, books, and websites, or data you have collected yourself. A good research poster will have a short and catchy title and succinct content. Let visuals such as charts, lists, images, and graphics tell the story of your research. The goal is not to put your whole paper on the poster. Pull out the highlights or key findings you want to share with others about your research. Before you get started designing your poster, ask yourself these three guide questions. What are the most interesting or valuable findings from my research? What is visually interesting about my research? Are there images or visuals that will help draw people to your poster? How will my presentation of the poster add interest? This can be done with engaging visuals, the layout of the content, or the title of your headings. Avoid the temptation to cover your poster with text. Less is more. Use a readable font like Arial and follow the font size guidelines on this slide for various pieces of your poster, like the title, headers, and body text. Headlines can help direct the viewer to key portions of your poster and can serve as a visual roadmap. You may start with the abstract and background at the top left of your poster and place the conclusions and references at the bottom right. Three useful design principles to remember are choose two or three colors to use throughout your poster. It will make the content appear less messy and won't distract the viewer. Pick fonts that are clear and easy to read, such as Arial. Fancy fonts may look nice, however, they can make reading the content more challenging. White space is your friend. You don't need to fill every inch of the poster with content. A little bit of breathing room between content will make the poster easier to read. Charts are a great way to represent numerical data. Just remember to keep the chart simple. Let the data speak for itself. Make sure the chart is well annotated with labeled axes and a simple color scheme. The chart to the left is clean and well labeled, making it easier to read. The busyness of the chart on the right makes it hard to understand what the data is showing. Balance your text with well-chosen images and avoid clip art. Use high definition graphics as this will ensure they print out well. Google Image Search has filters allowing you to sort results by high definition or large images. Look at the image of the goats. Which one do you think is the high definition version? If you said the left one, you're right. You can tell because it does not have the pixelation visible in the right hand image. The Digital Scholarship Lab printer uses a 42 inch wide roll of paper. So one of your poster dimensions cannot exceed 42 inches. A few common poster sizes are 24 by 36, 36 by 42, and 42 by 42. Always check with your instructor regarding which dimensions they want you to use before submitting a poster for printing. You can create posters in a plethora of software programs. I'll address some of the more common ones starting with Microsoft PowerPoint. By clicking the Design tab at the top menu, you can access the Slide Size button. From there, you can set the size of your slide. Once that is done, you can begin designing your poster. Make sure you export or save your final poster as a PDF for best printing results. If using Microsoft Publisher, when opening a new document, click more blank page sizes, then create a new page size and enter your dimensions. Again, make sure you export or save your final poster as a PDF. In Adobe InDesign, when you create a new document in the window that opens, change the units to inches and enter your dimensions and make sure you export or save your final poster as a PDF. When starting a blank presentation in Google Slides, in the File menu, select Page Setup 
and from the drop down select custom, then enter your preferred dimensions. As with the other programs, export or save your final poster as a PDF. This is a classic research poster example. It contains a lot of information, is hard to skim, and even harder to pick out the most important points. This example represents the best practices that have been discussed during this presentation. There's not a lot of text, it's easy to read graphics, are distributed throughout the poster, and white space helps to break up the content. There's even a QR code viewers can scan to get more information or be directed to a digital version of your paper. Just like each discipline has a specific style convention, different fields, industries, or conferences may have specific poster design requirements or poster templates you are required to use. Always check with your professor first to see if they have a certain template or specific poster requirements they want you to adhere to. Here's an example of an APA poster template, which you can download and use as a starting point for your own poster design. Marquette doesn't have any official university branded poster templates, but the links on this slide offer you access to a plethora of poster templates. If you use one, be sure to use it in the reference section of your poster. The resources on this slide can help you with choosing a color scheme that meets accessibility requirements and generating a QR code if you want to include a link on your poster to additional information or materials. Before submitting your poster for printing, ensure it is saved in the correct format. Look for keywords like save as, export, or download in the design tool you develop your poster in. We offer three different types of paper at various price points. The cost of your poster is determined by multiplying the inches printed off the roll by the cost of the paper type. We will always try to print your poster so that the least amount of paper comes off the roll. The URL on this slide will take you to the poster printing submission form. Complete the form, attach your poster file in a PDF format, and the lab can begin the process of printing your poster. A few important items to keep in mind regarding poster printing. It may take up to three business days to print your poster, so please do not wait until the last minute to send in your poster for printing. If you select the glossy paper type, it requires an additional 24 hours of drying or you will risk smudging the poster, so keep that in mind when deciding when to submit. Once your poster has been printed, you will be contacted by email that it is ready for pickup. You can pay, you can pay with market cash or departmental billing if your department is covering the cost of your poster print. We cannot accept cash, checks, or credit cards. That concludes this introduction to creating a research poster. Until next time, happy designing.